Good evening, Kutztown. I'm Diana Minogue. Coming up in tonight's newscast, Halloween approaches and KU hosts a rock and alumni concert. And I'm Jeff DePalma with an update on KU football and field hockey. We also have Casey Montague with a Kutztown weather forecast. So news break begins now. Yet another case of reported sexual assaults on campus has been put to rest by the campus police. The reported rape that occurred this past Sunday night in front of South Dining Hall has been investigated and no charges have been filed. Again, we urge all students to stay together, stay smart, and stay safe when traveling around campus late at night. If you found yourself on, on the north side of campus last night around 7.30, you would have seen quite the gathering at Schaefer Auditorium. That's because Kutztown graduate and Broadway director Eric Schaefer hosted several notable Broadway veterans in a concert performance of various Broadway classics. Schaefer's show, Signature Broadway, featured Rebecca Luker, who is currently on Broadway in Ham Rogers and Hammerstein's Cinderella, Ron Raines of Follies, Jason Danieli, and Christiane Null. The four Broadway greats performed group renditions and solos of well-known Broadway classics in the newly renovated auditorium, and all who attended enjoyed a night of music and magic. Kutzen is proud of the, of the achievements of such a successful alumni and wishes Eric Schaefer the best with his upcoming shows this season. Schaefer, for his part, was glad to be returning to his alma mater and hopes that his visit sparked some greater interest in the music department here at school. On Thursday night, in a homecoming celebration called the Rockin' Alumni Concert, alumni Rick Vito also performed as Schaefer, a KU grad and former member of the band Fleetwood Mac. He returned to headline a show complete with everything from blues to rock to gospel selections. Vito's performance was followed up by yet another accomplished KU grad and musician, Mark Wayne Glassmeyer, who did not fail to impress with a set of folk songs. The night went over well for the alumni who attended and showcased the talented musicians who have attended our school. You know, I think it's wonderful that we have so many accomplished musicians and KU grads that can come back to our school to share their talents with us. Yeah, I know. It was so like just awesome to hear them play and like even if they've talked to you, just to hear their stories. Absolutely. We'll be coming right up back after these messages. My check. Every Wednesdays at 8 p.m. and Fridays at 1 p.m. Be sure to tune in Tuesday evenings at 7 p.m. to catch co-hosts Devin Raventoss and Eddie Richard as they travel around the Berks County and Lehigh Valley area exploring some great places to visit. Camera One re-airs Wednesdays at 7.30 and Fridays at 12.30. Don't miss it! You know, it's getting really cold out lately, and I really don't like it. No, not at all. I really hope that it'll be nicer this weekend for Halloween. Let's head over to Casey Montague for our weather report this week. Thanks, guys. Good evening, Kutztown. It will be getting warmer out. So today we had a high of 57, and it was sunny out. Tonight we will we'll be dropping down to 38 degrees, and tomorrow will be just like today with a high of 59 and a low of 44, partly cloudy. Now for your five-day forecast. Wednesday, we'll have a high of 59 and a low of 44. Thursday, which is Halloween, do expect some rain with a 30% chance. And we'll have a high of 68 and a low of 58. So make sure you bring your umbrella with you on Thursday to class. And Friday, we'll also have tons of rain. We'll have an 80% chance of rain. And the winds will be blustery. 
and we'll have a high of 67 and a low of 42. And Saturday we'll have a high of 62 and a low of 37, partly cloudy. And Sunday we'll have a high of 52 and a low of 27. So the rest of the week it will be getting warmer out, thank God. And have a great Halloween and back to you guys. Thanks, Casey, for giving us a brighter outlook for our Halloween weekend. Coming up next week, worldwide educational activist and author Hasina Sherjan will be coming to Kutztown to speak about the plight of Afghani women and her efforts to advance literacy and education opportunities for them. She will share her own story in Empowering Women in Afghanistan, Literacy and Education on Monday, October 4th at 3 p.m. in the McFarland Student Union. She will return the following day, Tuesday, November 5th at 3 p.m. again to speak on Empowering Women in Afghanistan, Vocational Training and Home Business Development. Sher Jan, who grew up in Kabul before moving to the United States, decided to take action against the plight of women in Afghanistan under the Taliban rule. She established the Aid for Afghanistan for Education Fund to aid in the advancement of women's rights and education in the nation following her presentation on Tuesday. On, after this presentation, she'll be available for a brief reception and book signing in the sub. Are you looking for something to do on Halloween night? Look no further than the All Halloween Party, held in and sponsored by Dixon Hall. Students from all residence halls, as well as any other off-campus friends, are invited to attend this Thursday night from 8.30 to 11 o'clock p.m. in Dixon's Northside Lounge. There will be food, music, and a scary movie, and be sure to dress up for the costume competition to be judged at 9 o'clock. Hope to see you all there. So, will you be coming to our Halloween party? Of course I'm going to come. I've always loved Halloween, and I really can't wait to see how creative everyone's going to get with their costumes. Absolutely. Well, coming up next in sports, we will cover the homecoming football game, and, and we'll have a detailed look at the cross country in soccer. So stay tuned after this. Kutztown University. I'm Adam, and I have your three-minute drill on BTL. Hey, I'm Kara, and I'll be taking you around campus for student interviews on Outside the Lines. I'm Alyssa, and I'll be rounding up the latest sporting events on Weekend Update. Hi, my name is Dylan Avery, top play of the week on BTL. Hi, I'm Jared. And I'm Zoe. And we're your hosts for Halftime. Hey, I'm Haley. And I'm Steve. And we're the hosts of Between the Lines. Tune in Wednesdays and Thursdays at 7. And Fridays at noon for all the latest breaking KU Sports updates. And remember, being outside the lines only gets you the scores. But here Between the Lines, we get you in the locker room. It's time again to take a look back at all the exciting action that happened this past weekend, and we're going to start with the football team taking on East Strasburg in the homecoming game. The big story here was, was the Golden Bears finding their running game again, gashing the Warriors' defense for 256 yards, with running back Daryl Scott running for 117 yards, including a 78-yard touchdown run. He would average an impressive 13 yards of rush. And then there was fellow running back James Waugh, playing in only his second career game, going for 79 yards, with, an, uh, with eight carries, averaging 9.9 .9 yards a carry. Finally, senior Cordes Wortham had 42 yards in this game, leaving him just 126 yards shy of becoming the only the 11th 2,000-yard rusher in school history. Quarterback Josh Luckenbaugh would go 17 for 31 with 147 yards and two touchdowns. However, he would be, take a beating in his game, getting sacked eight times. His favorite target of the day would be wide receiver Kellen Williams, who caught three passes for 46 yards and two touchdowns. Despite its effective running game, the Golden Bears would end up losing 43-26, to dropping their record to 1-7. They will now hit the road for two straight games, with their next game being against Millersville at 12 o'clock. The field hockey team would be in a tough matchup with Seton Hill, but they would come out on top, winning 2-0. Two to no two to 
It took until the 33rd minute, but Kutztown's Jamie Koenig scored the only goal needed to win. The Golden Bears would add to the, the lead in the 56th minute when Anna Baim scored her seventh goal of the season. Then there was the goalkeeper, Rachel Sanders, getting her second shutout of the season, and she would finish the game with three saves, earning the praise of her head coach, Marcy Schulich, saying she was the difference in the game. Not only would Sanders get praise from her coach, but, she also, but her fantastic play earned her the co-PSAC Athlete of the Week, along with IUP's Kate Bruce. The Golden Bears will look to keep, their role, keep this winning streak rolling when they take on East Stroudsburg this Saturday at 1 o'clock for Senior Day. The soccer team took on Alderson Brodus University last night at home. Kutztown would score quickly in the game when Curry, when Curry scored her first goal of the day off a corner kick by Megan Freller. It wouldn't take long for Kutztown to score again when, in the 15th minute, Curry would score off another Freyla corner kick, heading the ball in for her second goal. Curry would score for third and final goal in the 57th minute off of yet another corner kick by Freyler. When she headed the ball in for the final goal today, when the offense, the offense was rolling and the defense did its job, allowing the Battlers only two shots on goal, Kutztown would go on to score one more goal to win the game 4 to nothing. The Golden Bears will now look to return to action when they travel to take on Gannon, Uni Gannon when at Wednesday at 1 o'clock. Freshman Elena Curry had a career day as she scored three goals against Alderson Brodus University, earning her first career tr hat trick, leading the Golden Bears to a 4 to nothing victory. To finish up, we're going to take a look back at the women's cross country team, ending up with a top 10 finish at the PSAC Championships. The team would be led by, Cor by Corrine Manella, finishing the 6K in 35th place with a time of 23 minutes and 37.9 seconds. Manella would be followed by Megan Riley and Frances McNally, finishing in 45th and 46th place, respectively. Mansfield University would end up winning the whole event with 65 points, followed by Edinburgh University with 77 points, and then Shippensburg in third place with 103 points. To end the day, Kutztown would finish in ninth place overall with 231 points. And that's all we have for the sports. If, you wanna, if you'd like to see more stats and stories, then head to KUBears.com. That's all we have for you tonight. We'll see you again next Tuesday. For Diana, Casey, and the rest of the crew, good, good night. night.